Hello everyone, so today we'll be talking about how mucus builds up in cystic fibrosis and also why uh, people with cystic fibrosis have salty sweat. So we know that cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder um, where you have a multi-system involvement and the most prominent feature is actually the lung involvement where you have um, recurrent respiratory infections. And this is due to the mucus build up in your uh, respiratory epithelium. So today we're going to see how this mucus build up first. Later we'll be talking about the salty sweat. So these are my resources. And over here I've drawn a diagram of the respiratory epithelium. Um, this part is the outer part. Uh, it's the surface part where it um, faces the air that goes into your lungs and then this part is where it faces your um, blood vessels and the inside of your lungs. So uh, if you look at these epithelial cells, on the surface where it's facing the air, there's um, the structures, hair-like structures on these cells known as cilia. And these cilia actually, they are not static like this in the drawing. They actually move and they move in a sweeping motion. And the function of this sweeping motion is to sweep this mucus out of your lungs. So usually um, mucus in your lungs will be swept, will be constantly swept out uh, through your bronchi and bronchus, then um, into your trachea and then up to the back of your mouth where you either cough it out or you swallow the sputum, which is what happens most of the time. Um, this is really important because um, two reasons. So number one, if the mucus doesn't get swept up, uh, the mucus starts to accumulate here. So a... Let me draw green maybe. Okay. So the mucus starts to accumulate and then you get a thick layer of mucus. And um, once the, the mucus becomes so thick, it actually blocks up your airways and then it causes that obstruct obstruction. So air cannot flow in and out of your lungs. Another reason is, um, you know, the air that you inhale, it's not always clean, right? There's some dust particles, some bacteria in the air that you constantly inhale. And these bacteria, they end up sticking to the mucus. So let's say this is bacteria. They end up sticking to the mucus. And then um, this ciliary action will actually um, sweep the mucus out of your lungs so that you don't get your chest infections. So if it doesn't, if your cilia are not working, your mucus just stays there. And then your bacteria um, comes here and lands there. Um, you will get your chest infections. So these are the two reasons to uh, prevent the obstruction and also to prevent chest infections. Okay, knowing that, let's look at the pathophysiology of how this mucus build up and this um, ciliary dysfunction happens in cystic fibrosis. So if you look over here, um, we'll be talking about three channels here. So first, let's focus on the CFTR protein and also the ENEC protein. CFTR stands for Cystic Fibrosis Transmembrane Regulator. And this protein is actually a channel um, where uh, the normal action is to absorb chloride from this airway surface liquid, from the exterior to the interior. So, um, and then the normal function of this ENEC is to um, transport sodium from the exterior to the interior. So uh, just let me draw out the functions here so you can remember them. So the normal function here is chloride going in. And the normal function here is sodium going in. Okay, so this CFTR protein is actually um, coded by a CFTR gene, but the function of CFTR gene is not just limited to making this protein here. It also down-regulates ENEC. 
ENAC stands for um, epithelial sodium channel. E stands for epithelial, and A stands for sodium, and C stands for channel. So the normal function of the CFTR gene is to um, downregulate this sodium channel, this ENAC over here. Knowing that in cystic fibrosis, um, you have a mutation in your CFTR gene. So this will cause uh, the either absence or dysfunction of your CFTR protein. And also at the same time, um, this downregulation of ENAC is no longer there. So what happens in um, CFTR, uh, in cystic fibrosis uh, patients is that because the CFTR gene is not doing its functions anymore, this ENAC is no longer downregulated. And so uh, this ENAC is um, too active. And so it's absorbed too much sodium into the interior. So uh, as a result of that, um, I, I forgot to mention that actually chloride um, not only goes through this um, CFTR protein, chloride can also pass through paracellularly, so in between the cells. Chloride can also pass through like this. So when sodium, uh, too much sodium gets reabsorbed because the CFTR gene is not working and then ENAC is um, too active. So too much sodium gets, uh, gets transported to the interior. As a result, you see a positive and negative signs here, right? So sodium uh, ions has a positive charge and chloride ions has a negative charge. And we know that opposite charge uh, opposite charges actually attract. So as sodium gets reabsorbed, chloride also follows paracellularly. And as a result, you have too much sodium and chloride in, in the interior. And then we know that sodium and chlorides are solutes. And then um, this is where the aquaporin comes into the picture. So aquaporin is a uh, channel that allows water to flow in and out. And uh, this occurs via osmosis. And we know that osmosis is um, the flow of water from uh, an area of um, low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. So here there's a higher concentration of solutes, which are your sodium and chloride. And then this causes water to flow in to the interior through your aquaporins. And this, this flow of water in through osmosis causes the airway surface liquid and your mucus to become dehydrated. And when this airway surface liquid and mucus becomes dehydrated, your cilia um, gets uh, can't work properly. Uh, so imagine uh, here is like not so viscous like water. So your cilia can actually beat nicely because it's not so viscous. As it dehydrates, it becomes more viscous like honey. And so your cilia uh, can't work properly and you can't um, push the mucus up. And this is how your mucus actually accumulates because um, the dehydrated airway surface liquid and dehydrated mucus um, causes the cilia to not be able to function. I hope that's clear. And another thing that we'll be talking about is the, um, at the sweat glands. So in the sweat glands, it's a little bit different. In, um, in the sweat glands, the CFTR gene does not function to downregulate -re ENAC. Um, first, we'll be talking about the function of CFTR and ENAC in this sweat gland here. So um, here's an ENAC and here's a CFTR protein. So the normal function of this uh, ENAC is to reabsorb sodium. Uh, not sure why it's not working anymore. Okay. Hmm. 
Why is it not working anymore? Is it lagging? It's getting hot here.